this video, we introduce for you the uh, topic of spontaneous generation and how Francisco Reddy's famous experiment disproved it. This will be important for you for your free response question on the exam. So let's first talk about what spontaneous generation is. What was this idea? It's actually pretty simple. The idea was simply that life could originate from non-living materials. And it came from real world observations. So, for example, in the Nile River, every year, in case you don't know this from your history class, it floods and it deposits, it deposits this really uh, rich soil uh, along the shore. And this is one of the reasons why the Nile Delta was such a great place for cultivating uh, crops and still is today. Now, what's interesting, though, is that uh, what would happen in the rainy season, when the Nile River would overflow its banks and it would deposit this thick mud, frogs would just crawl out of the ground. And so it was obvious to people that this black mud must spontaneously generate, create out of nowhere, these frogs. Another one in Europe, uh, people realized that you know, if they had their barns and they started to leak and the, the grain they were storing in the barns got wet and moldy, that mice would appear. So the thought was that you know, mice must actually be created by moldy grain. In fact, there is even a, a famous uh, recipe, essentially, uh, from Dr. John Batista that essentially said that you took dirty shirts and wheat and you waited 21 days and you would generate mice. And he would even uh, talk about the fact that after 21 days you'd have mice that'd be adult males and females and even uh, being able to be capable of reproducing more mice. Another one, last one, recipe for making bees. And this is, you know, written. I think this was from Egypt, actually. Now, where did all this actually come from? Well, of course, in real life, the frogs that they were observing in Egypt did not spontaneously generate from the mud. What happened the year before, at the end of the rainy season, sorry, the dry season, is the, the frogs would actually crawl down into the soil and essentially hibernate down there. And then in the, you know, the, the rainy season, those frogs would then sort of wake back up from their hibernation because it's a good time to be alive again and they'd crawl out of the mud. So to the observer, it looks like, oh my goodness, these frogs are just appearing out of the mud. Same thing, of course, with the mice example and with the bees. But how do we actually prove this scientifically, that spontaneous generation is not true? Because, of course, it is not true. Well, here's the experiment. Francisco Reddy, this is what you're going to have to understand here. This is the experiment. What he did actually scientifically show that maggots and flies don't just spontaneously arise from meat was he took two different containers. One was open to fly contact and had some meat in it. The other one was sealed and had the meat in it. So the flies can't get into this one. This was his control group. This was the experimental group. And what he found over time was that ma uh, flies and maggots appeared only in the container that was open to fly contact. The one that was sealed where the flies couldn't get in no flies or maggots appeared. This showed that, no, the meat is not spontaneously generating the maggots and the flies. They are coming from the outside. So life does not just spontaneously arise. Now, if you think about what were the variables, the independent variable was whether the, con the container was closed or open, right? Open or closed. Again, the control group was the open container. Experimental group was the closed container. Independent variable, whether it was open or closed. Dependent variable was what was the result whether there were flies and maggots or not. So his conclusion was that the maggots and the flies only appeared in flasks that were open to fly contact and that indicated to him, as we now know and understand, that life does not just arise spontaneously from non-living material, that, that these flies came from pre-existing flies. There's another picture you might find if you kind of Google Francisco Reddy's experiment. Again, you have your control group where the meat is open to fly contact and the experimental group where it's closed. The independent variable is whether the, the, the jar is sealed or not. Dependent variable is whether or not we see uh, the maggots or not. So I hope this clarifies uh, for that one free response question what uh, the answer is. I hope this makes sense. If you have questions, of course, come see me. We'll see you next time.